Uh -oh. So he'll come up and release the rose. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> On mic? Yep, thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Lord Providence Presbyterian Church on this first Sunday after Easter. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're visiting with us today at Lower Providence Presbyterian Church, we're excited to have you with us. If you want to find out more information about our church, feel free to fill out one of our connection cards that are at the end of each aisle down the lower level of the sanctuary and certainly upstairs in the balcony as well. Then drop that connection card off to the welcome desk in our atrium, and there you'll receive a welcome packet about our church as well. And certainly if you're visiting with us, it is great to have you with us. And please know our mission and vision. We are an intergenerational church seeking Jesus Christ together and shining his light from this hill as we aspire to be welcoming, growing, and serving. And it certainly is an exciting Sunday because this is a Sunday that we are serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the church has left the building ministry, which means we're involved in eight service projects this weekend, two yesterday and six today after the service, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ by bringing the message of hope to those that are hurting, those that are in need in our local communities. I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate the resurrection than the church has left the building Sunday. It's an exciting time, and if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. Please see me after the service, and I can find a spot for you to get involved in this Missional Day, over a hundred volunteers involved as well, which is pretty exciting. Can I get an amen for that? That is super, super exciting and certainly appreciate the serving team that puts this day together for sure. I also have exciting news because we have a new hire here at Lower Providence Presbyterian Church. Hopefully you got that letter in the mail coming from myself and the session of our church. But we have a new director of congregational care and senior ministry, and that is one of our own, Nancy Care. And Nancy has a wonderful gift of empathy, compassion, and care for others. And I believe she's going to fit this role beautifully. And when you get a chance, please welcome Nancy to this new position. And also, uh, please know that her position will begin on Wednesday, May 1st. And last but not least, what a great last name for this position as well, right? Nancy Care. All right, I'll leave it at that. But certainly exciting to have Nancy on board and on staff with us. Please also know that today is communion as we partake in the Lord's Supper, and it will be by intinction. You will come forward and take a piece of the bread and dip it in the juice and then head back down the side aisles. If you're not able to come forward, that's okay. We have a roaming team that will come to you this morning. Just raise your hand 
after the words of institution. At this time, I'd like to invite our AV team to come forward as they have a minute for mission. Maybe two minutes of mission. Maybe a little bit more. I warned him. <laughs> I'm to blame. Good morning. Uh, Brandy. Brandy, can you fix this? Brandy, come on. It's like she's not paying attention or something, you know? Brandy. Brandy. I have a great idea. Let me do this and I'll get her attention. Just give me one second for a quick wardrobe change. It's really important to get in the character. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Brandy, can you hear me? Can you feel me near you? Oh, Brandy. <laughs> Brandy. You're uh, supposed to interrupt okay, okay, now. Okay, 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 stop, stop, stop. Clearly, this is not American Idol or a rock opera or anything. Um, hang on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Mary Ann. It, it's, sorry, it, it's just really tough, um, you know, to get the sound all set up, to do a minute for mission, and control the sound in here, and control the sound going to the live stream. And I also want to apologize to you, because if I didn't have two jobs to do, I would have cut Al's mic as soon as he put those sunglasses what? on. What? <laughs> so, you know, Brandy, it's, it's, it's interesting that you bring up about the soundboard, because what we're doing in the AV team is we're upgrading our system. So instead of one soundboard, we're going to have two. Somebody We have two screens? One that works, you mean? <laughs> yeah, bad, bad day for the AV team with one down. So yeah, we'll have both screens running as well, but with the two sound systems, one person will control what goes out of the building. What I call is the sound has left the building. <laughs> and one for inside the building, inside the sanctuary. Wow, that is great. What else is happening now? Well, we're also going to be upgrading our slide presentation software and live streaming device, rebalancing all of the mics for better sound quality, and a few other details to make our worship service even better from an AV standpoint, whether you are in person or watching from home. Wow, that's great. I mean, the sound system updates are going to be fantastic. You know what else would be fantastic? What? <laughs> and we'd be getting more volunteers for the AV team. Huh. Brandy, what do you think? Yeah, I think that that would be awesome. You know, quite honestly, it's really fun up in the booth. Sometimes Al brings sticky buns, and uh, we get invited to the annual music ministry uh, party. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any position here in music ministry, as Al so indicated. <laughs> um, but it is really fun up in the booth. And once you learn how to use the equipment, it's actually quite easy. It's just a matter of anticipating what's happening next. What yeah. is happening next, Mary, Marian? Yeah, well, sometimes what's happening next really just means you're pushing a space bar to advance a slide. It's a lot of fun. We provide all the training, and you pair up with a seasoned volunteer as you learn. We would love to have a few more people on board to give it a try. So if you're interested, please reach out to anybody on the AV team, or you can email music, Marianne. Please give the roll wave so everybody knows who you are. There you go. And we'd be glad to have you stop by for training. Between now and the 21st, we're going to have the new system up and running. So even if you don't want to be part of the team but just want to see what we do, feel free to stop by. We probably should stop. We kind of left Bob all by himself up there. Oh, good luck, Bob. Let's see you. <laughs> We'll be up, Bob. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Thank you all. Thank you. Our services within our sanctuary will be enhanced, but also our live streaming being enhanced going out from this church as well so that we can shine the light of Jesus Christ on Sunday mornings as a welcoming, growing, and serving congregation. At this time, let us now prepare our hearts to worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ.
Amen. I'm going to invite you to um, follow the call to worship that will be on the screen behind me and not the one in your bulletin. And also the prayer to confession on the screen that will be behind me. Okay, so here we go. Good morning, good morning. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, in response, we say, here's my heart, take and seal it, seal it for the courts above. Let us worship God with all our hearts.
Amen. Please be seated. Amen. For the last seven weeks, we have been following the life and faith of Peter. Despite being one of Jesus' most loyal disciples, Peter still made mistakes. He was faithful and messy, humble and afraid, loving and cautious. Friends, we're a lot like Peter. Despite our faith, we make mistakes. Despite our belief, we carry unbelief. Despite our love, we can cause hurt. So like Peter, let us return to God in prayer, confessing the truth of our lives. God's grace does not stop with that humble yet fearful disciple. God's grace reaches all the way to us. Let us pray together what will be found on the screen. Gracious God, like Peter, we crawl out of the boat only to sink. You tell us your truth and we push it away. We ask about forgiveness and are surprised by abundance. We profess our faith and deny it three times. We run to the empty tomb and leave in silence. Over and over again, we find ourselves wandering along the journey of faith. Tether us to your heart. Forgive our surprise, our denial, and our limited imagination. Call us out of the boat once more. We are eager to return to you with humble hearts, we pray. Amen. Friends, the first time that Peter saw Jesus after the crucifixion, Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? This repetition was not because Jesus doubted Peter's word. This repetition was Jesus offering Peter grace. You see, the last time Jesus and Peter were together, Peter said three times, do you love me? Well, Peter said three times, I do not know him. So when Jesus returned, he asked Peter, do you love me? And in that moment, he allowed Peter to turn his denials into love. Friends, the grace of our God knows no end. When we stumble, when we fall, when we deny God or cause harm, Jesus meets us where we are and offers us a second chance. So rest in this good news. Does God love you? Yes, 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 God loves you. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love that never ends. At this time, I'd like to invite Al Kearney to come forward for a mission testimony. There he is, back again, Al. Woo! It is Cummings, right? Or ask for a raise or a sequel or a spinoff or something. So good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, everyone. What I'm here to talk to you about is the church has left the building. As Ted has mentioned, there are some of the events occurring today, and there were two that occurred yesterday. So one of the ones I was involved with, with 15 of my church family members, and if they could just stand up real quick, if they're here, maybe. I'm not going to put you on the spot just so people know that who participated. Great. 
So I'd like to thank all these folks for participating. We had a great, a great time working there. Yeah. So we were at Cradles to Crayons, and we were at their giving factory in Philadelphia. So folks who don't know Cradles to Crayons, they're the largest nonprofit organization focused on children's clothing insecurity. So you may say to yourself, is clothing insecurity really a necessary thing? When you look at their website, you find some pretty shocking statistics. Philadelphia is the poorest large city in the nation, with over 300,000 children living in poverty. Four out of 10 Philadelphia households cannot afford their weekly expenses. And unlike food and unlike housing, there's no government funding for clothing. So, Bob, if you could just flip the next slide, I should have said that. It's difficult when you're not controlling your slides. Uh, did you miss one? Sorry, or did I miss one? It was just showing the volunteers. So at the end, they take a nice picture of everybody who participated, and that's the team. So what we were responsible for doing, so next slide, please, Bob, is we were involved with sorting of clothing. And so it's a massive organization, a massive facility if you haven't been there. We took the clothing that was given to us, and if you look at the middle picture, you see how large this place is. And that's all of our team working in those various rows. Sorting the clothing, girls, boys, ages, pants, dresses, shirts, and those are going into the bins at the end. And they'll be further sorted for distribution to kids in need. So for me, it was great that me, myself, and the church members had a chance to be the hands and feet of Jesus with helping those in need. What's more important to me from an impact standpoint is when I actually see someone who's benefited from what we do. So in closing, a very short, Ted, it's gonna be very short, <laughs> a very short video for somebody whose family has actually benefited from what Cradles to Crayons does. So, Bob, video please. Bills. It's, diff it's very, very difficult. You have to wait for the next paycheck to come. And you have to worry about, okay, then I have to wait another two weeks to get another paycheck to get other necessities that I need. So it is quite, quite stressful. I actually found out about Cradles to Crayons from a coworker. After Miracle was born, they gave me um, diapers, wipes, and socks for her because it was very, very expensive because at that time I was on maternity leave. And, you know, it was difficult paying the bills. I was really, really thankful for that. When I received that package from Cradle to Crayon, oh my gosh, it was like joy. It was a two month supply of diapers and wipes. So I was able to save that money towards another bill. I didn't have to use that money. That money that I saved from buying those particular items, I could put towards my bank account or save it just for her for the future, making sure that she's okay. She goes into a happy and healthy child. Not having to worry about, okay, I need all, I need extra money to buy her diapers, buy her wipes, buy her basic essentials. Sleep better, one less thing to worry about. So I was really thankful for the package. When I think of an organization like Cradle to Crayon, I think of like a light at the end of a tunnel. It's a dark tunnel and there's a light at the end and you know you're gonna to get to that light because it's hope. Knowing that I'm not alone and I could get the help that I need just by reaching out. And I'm very, very thankful for the organization. Wow, what a worthy cause. And just think that we can help support them. So now it's time in our presentation for our favorite part, our presentation of tithes and offerings. Give thanks to God, for he is good. Let us gratefully give our tithes and offerings to the glory of God and in praise of Christ's resurrecting ministry. May the ushers please come forward.
You may be seated. Gracious and loving God, please accept these offerings as a sign of our gratitude and bless our work on behalf of your risen son, Jesus the Christ. May we love as Jesus loved, and may we serve as Jesus served. And God of resurrection hope, be with us now in a time such as this, when there is so much unrest, pain, suffering, and strife. We pray for all the places in the world that need a resurrection of hope and peace. Lord, we're calling for peace in war-torn nations, peace in polarized political environments, peace in a divided world due to racism, sexism, and ageism. May we see one another as you see us. We also pray for unity in the church, May we stand shoulder to shoulder, leaning into the hope that the risen Christ gives us so that we can boldly stand against the evils and injustices of this world. Lord, please give, us, give wisdom to the leaders of the world. May they lead with peace and true justice, putting personal ambitions aside and focusing in on the needs of the people. We pray for unity in our families, Lord, that they, if they're divided and separated, let them see and use you as the glue that holds them together in love. We pray for those who are in need of peace of mind, those weighed down by the stresses and strains of everyday life, who suffer from anxiety, who are oppressed by worry and fear, for those who find it hard to let go of things and simply trust you, Lord. You bring your peace, which passes all understanding to them, Lord, so that they can exhale, exhale this stress and inhale your goodness. Lord God, we lift up those who are sick and shut in. Please comfort those who suffered the loss of loved ones. Please be with those who are alone or who feel separated from you in any way. The addicted, the homeless, jobless, helpless, and the needy. Let them feel your loving presence and know that they are not alone. Let them know that you are the source of everything and let them only seek you. Let them know that like the lost sheep, you will come, you will find them, and you will carry them back to your fold. Lord, we thank you, and we thank you. We thank you for your son, his life, and his willingness to endure the cross for us. Jesus, thank you for modeling all that is good and beautiful. And we now pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite Rob Josen to come forward as he has a special minute for mission, which is really a mission testimony. There will be a few more minutes uh, as well. Let's take my glasses off so I don't see anything and I won't get shy. <laughs> so I um, just, just want to encourage everybody to, to come to the intergenerational mission trip in, for this summer. Now, I know this is something that not everybody can do because it's just not feasible to, to plan a week, you know, to take off uh, scheduling a bear for something like this. And that's the beauty of this church is that there are so many other ways to give. There'll be another event down, down the pike to, to join up for. Or they'll, every dollar you put in that basket goes to doing some good for somebody somewhere. So don't worry if you can't make it. 
And if you can make it and you're getting a little anxiety about, can I contribute? Can I, is, when I first saw some of the pictures of the accomplishments of these mission trips, you know, I saw ramps being built, uh, decks being built from scratch, roofs being put on. Um, I thought, can I help? But we do all have gifts to give. And as in First Peter's, it says we should give them. Let's give it a shot. Uh, there, there'll be not just construction jobs to do. There's destruction jobs to do. You might tear something down that's a hazard or painting or um, community work like Al was showing they did in, in Philadelphia. There's stuff like that for restocking places and sorting things out. And the, the kids actually made the front page of the newspaper last year for going to celebrate Christmas in July with the elderly at a home. So there's, there's something for everybody. And Pastor Ted does a fantastic job of pairing the right people with the right team, with the right job. And well, we will get something done. And Paige does a fantastic job with the youth. They're happy if we didn't wear them out during the work day. And when Mary Ann says the kids are gonna have fun, they're gonna have fun. And the rest of the reasons for going could be selfish. It was actually, it was fun. The fellowship with everybody in the congregation that goes there. We're fun people. We had, there was singing and dancing and well, maybe not dancing, but if you want to dance, you can get up and dance. There, there was singing and games, the stuff at night and you got to eat with everybody and you'd have more relaxing conversation and longer to you know, talk and get to know people. And you got to be the hands and feet of God. And, you know, we are trying to do that. And, and you would really feel, you would feel it in your hands. You'd feel it in your feet. You'd feel it maybe a little in your lower back, a little bit in your neck. But you would feel it. And, and most of all, you would feel it in your heart. Uh, you, you're out there doing good, and Jesus was there. And... He's not there for you, we know, because he's rewarding you for going and doing something good for somebody because we know it's by his grace that we're saved, that we're blessed, that we're loved. But he says he will be there if there's two or three more gathered in my name, just like he's here today. And, and he was out there. Um, during Lent, uh, we did the uh, devotional cards that were given out for... Um, uh, uh, each night, you know, we go through the cards. And the one question was, I kind of phrased it to the kids as, when did you first feel Jesus really strongly? And without hesitation, my seven-year-old son, Wade, jumps up, says, the mission trip. And I, that gave me goosebumps. First, that he felt Jesus. And second, that it was the mission trip. So... The mission trip. God bless you all. Hope to see you there if you can make it. Thank you, Ron. And uh, just want to reiterate uh, the dancing part uh, may or may not happen. But certainly the love sharing with those in need in Morgantown, West Virginia, does happen as we're the hands and feet. And certainly, Ron, hearing how your son Wade was touched and how he felt close to God on that mission experience. That has touched my heart, and I believe all of our hearts today. And thank you for sharing your heart today, Ron. Thank you, Al, for sharing your heart today about cradles to crayons and the difference that makes in children's lives that are in need, right? Children in which their basic needs are not being met, such as food and housing and educational needs that they have, school supplies. And I believe today is all about the heart to serve. And the reason that we have a heart to serve is because of Christ's heart for us and to serve others, which I believe we see in our text today in John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Listen to the word of the Lord. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. 
Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving, gracious God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we pray today that your word might penetrate our hearts and change our thoughts and our actions so that we might have a calling just like you gave to the disciples to feed my sheep. Lord, I pray that we might have that same vision, knowing firstly that you have loved us. And so now we go out and we share your love with others caring for your flock. And finally, Lord, I pray that your words may be mine. In your name, amen. Well, this is the conclusion of our Wandering Hearts series. And today's sermon title is, Here's My Heart. And so today we look at the heart of Jesus, but we also look again at the heart of Peter, this disciple that we've been following throughout the past seven weeks. What do we see again in Peter in this time where he is out on the lake, the Sea of Tiberias to be exact, again fishing with the disciples? It's late at night. They're back to the regular routine of life. It's after the resurrection. And they're fishing, right? And they've caught nothing again. It reminds me when we first started this series, Wanda, when you preached about the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee, and again, their nets were not catching any fish. Until someone showed up, right? The Messiah, Jesus. And that's what exactly has happened. Jesus is on the shoreline, right? Throw your net to the right side of the boat. And so they do, not truly knowing at that moment who it was. And then suddenly John realizes it's the Messiah. Now, they're only 100 yards from the shoreline. Maybe John was the best in terms of his eyesight. And he knew it was... The Messiah, right? It is the Lord. And as soon as Peter heard those words, what does he do? He jumps out of the boat. I think he had a bit of confidence the last time he stepped out of a boat. He was able to walk on water, right? So no matter where he was on this Sea of Tiberias, I'm sure he felt like, well, I don't know where I am. I don't know how deep the water is, but I feel confident if I have to, I can walk on the water, right? But maybe being so close to the shoreline, he didn't have to walk. Maybe he could just literally run through that water, and I believe that's exactly what he did. Peter's heart wanting to be with the Messiah, whatever it took, he was going to be the first to be there with Jesus at the side of this 
sea at the shoreline, Peter's heart always fully in, right? As we've seen throughout these past seven weeks, his heart for Jesus, right? The first to step out of the boat, the first to jump into the water to see Jesus, the first to confess his faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, right? A heart for Jesus, but guess what? He also had a heart to not always get it right either. Even though I think he was well-intentioned, he was one that got in the way of Jesus, right? He didn't want Jesus to be handed over to the religious leaders. This shall never happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. And Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. His heart was in the right place, but he always didn't get it right. He was the fully in. And I believe this last interaction that Jesus came to be with Peter on the lake shore there at the Sea of Tiberias was an important one. Scottish theologian William Barclay talks about this moment being so important because we know that after the arrest of Jesus, what did Peter do? He denied that he even knew Jesus three times. And when the rooster crowed, you remember what he did? He was heartbroken. He wept. He was so sad over the fact that he had turned his back on his Savior, Jesus. And so Barclay writes that this is an important time for Peter to affirm his love of Jesus Christ on this shoreline. That this would be the last time that Peter would be with Jesus in an intimate way. And Jesus wanted it to look different than what it looked like when he denied him. And so that's why Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Because three times Peter was able to affirm his love of Jesus Christ. That those would be the memory that he would have of his last time with Jesus. Not the denials, but the fact that he affirmed his love of Jesus. That's what would be on his heart and mind when Jesus would soon ascend to be with the Father in heaven. Jesus wanted that moment to be the last intimate moment that he had with Peter because Jesus knew his heart. He knew how much that Peter loved him. And not just Peter, but the other disciples, right? Because the last time they had a meal together, it didn't go so well, did it? Judas betrayed him, right? Peter denied him three times. And by the way, all the disciples scattered when Jesus was arrested. Only one was there for the crucifixion. And so Jesus being the God that he truly was, a God of love, a God of forgiveness, has this last moment with his disciples, not reprimanding them, but showing them great love and compassion and forgiveness. Saying, you are my loved ones. I want to dine with you. I want to have this last meal at this shoreline to be a meal of blessing, to be a meal of love and forgiveness. How I care for you. How I will always be there for you, right? It's a moment of love. I believe the disciples were touched profoundly that day. But it wasn't just for them to receive the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus had a calling for them, didn't he? He was saying not just to Peter, but to all of the disciples. Care for my sheep, right? Feed my sheep. And when I think of those words, I believe Jesus was saying more than just spread the good news with what I have to say to all of my children, spread the good news of my teachings. Yes, that was incredibly important. And Peter gave a great sermon at Pentecost, and many were saved, 3,000 to be specific. And so the disciples took on that calling, but he also wanted his disciples to care for the flock of his pasture. And that meant meeting the needs of all of my children in this world. As we see throughout the scriptures, Jesus would feed his disciples, right? The Last Supper. Here we see this meal on the shoreline. Jesus fed the 5,000 because he wanted to show that he wanted to provide for everyone to be met in terms of their physical needs. That those needs mattered, that someone needed to have a full stomach before they could go out and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is the gospel, by the way. Wanda, I'm reminded of our seminary's motto when I was school many years prior to you. I think right after Noah, maybe it was very long ago. And I remember the motto, the whole gospel for the whole person. And I love that because it's not just about meeting people's spiritual needs, but it's about meeting their physical and their emotional needs as well. That that matters. That the basic needs of life should be met in every person's life in this world. 
When someone doesn't have enough food to eat or doesn't have shelter or roof over their head, those needs to be met, and we need to be a part of meeting those needs in people's lives because that matters. We need to share the love of Jesus Christ, meeting the emotional needs of others, those that are hurting, those that feel unloved and uncared for. We need to go to them just as Jesus did, right? Caring for the woman at the well, crossing racial boundaries, right? Gender boundaries, saying that she was a child of God that mattered to God, and I'm going to spend time with you and care for you. And no rabbi, by the way, would have ever done that. And yet that was Rabbi Jesus, right? And we need to take on that same kind of calling, the whole gospel for the whole person, meeting others' spiritual but also emotional and physical needs. Because that matters, because every child of God matters. Everyone deserves a home and food to eat, right? Amen. It is why I love this weekend the church has left the building, because I believe we take on this calling to feed the sheep of God's pasture, right? And so we did it yesterday with cradles to crayons, right? Caring for children in need in the greater Philadelphia area. Those statistics were telling Al, that you shared with us today. Children not having enough food, not enough clothing, right? It's hard to put our minds around that. And then yesterday, the Philadelphia Project. I love this ministry that reaches out to those in Philadelphia who aren't able to repair their homes because they don't have the financial resources or they don't have the capabilities to be able to do that. And yesterday, we were able to make people's homes warmer, safer, and drier through that wonderful ministry. And today, I appreciate that we're going to support the Interfaith Food Pantry in Norristown, the Daily Bread Food Pantry in Collegeville, to make sure the people in our communities have enough food to eat. It's not just the city of Philadelphia, but we have people in need right here in our local communities that we need to be caring for and supporting. And so we do that today. We're also going to visit the homebound today, those in our congregation that aren't able to come to worship. We're going to go and visit them to let them know that we care about them. We're going to pray with them. We're going to visit with them. We're going to hear their stories and how they're doing because that's what we do here. We go out and we care for the flock right here within the congregation as well. Amen. That's important too as well. Bobby, I'm looking at you because just in a few moments, we're going to have a lot of volunteers in the Williams Hall sewing feminine hygiene kits for women throughout our world so that they can stay in school, so that they can stay employed. What a wonderful mission, making a difference in women's lives so that they can have these hygiene kits. What a wonderful ministry. Today we're going to support the Hospitality Center, which is a wonderful ministry in Norristown. I know, Sue and Jim, you support that ministry as well through helping others find work. They're the homeless, right? Those that are unhoused, those that are struggling, don't have enough food to eat, don't have employment. We need to be thinking about the least of these right in our community. For Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, whatever you've done for the least of these, you have done for me. And so we do that through supporting the hospitality center. And I believe we as a church, we have a heart for those that are unhoused, those that are struggling with not having their basic needs met. Which reminds me, this past Thursday night, I was at the Lower Providence Township Board of Supervisors meeting. And I represented our church as RHD, the Relocation of Resources for Human Development, continues their proposal for the Eagleville Hospital to have a place called Jenny's Place. Short-term housing for the homeless so they can have a roof over their head, food to eat, so that they can have opportunities for employment so they can get counseling services, life coaching services, so they can get back on their feet and have quality of life. And I shared again the letter from our session supporting that endeavor. And by the way, we'll find out in a couple of weeks how that will land in terms of if it's going to happen at the hospital. I think in two weeks on April 18th, one last public hearing and then a vote. But what I appreciate is the fact that our church has a heart for the least of these, that we are supporting that endeavor as well, because every person's life in this world matters, amen, especially those that are suffering, those that are struggling. And guess what? We're going to pray today as well. We're going to pray in... 
the role in parlor today for those that are suffering, those that are hurting throughout our world, in our local communities, in our nation. And we're going to lift them up to God in prayer, some of them by name, because we know prayer is so important. And when we pray, it puts onto our minds and onto our hearts those that are suffering, those that are struggling. And I believe we're even that much more aware of feeding the sheep of God in this world. If you're not signed up today and you're looking for a place to serve, come and pray with us. Judy Baker will be there. Pam Cherry, you'll be there as well. Kathy Crane will be there as we lift up prayers to God. In some ways, I believe one of the greatest ways we can care for another human being is to pray for them. Well, as I close my thoughts today, I know that everyone can't be involved today, and I understand that. Not everyone can go on the intergenerational mission trip, and that's okay, too, as well. But the key, I believe, is that every day is an opportunity to feed the sheep of God's pasture in this world. And by the way, I think the first place that we need to start is our homes. I know for me, it's 412 Van Gleason Drive. I did feed my son this past week a pizza, and he ate the whole pizza, so maybe I need to think about uh, that calling of feeding my sheep. But I do think that's important that we feed our children. But it's important that we love our families, right? It needs to start there, amen? And then we need to think about our neighbors, right? Which reminds me of my father when he got later on in his life, in his 80s. I remember he took on a mission in his neighborhood. He lived at 960 Greenbrier Drive in Springfield, Delaware County. It was a more urban area. On his block, there were about 50 homes. And my dad's ministry, to reach out to his neighbors, you know what it was? It was a trash can ministry. Every Tuesday and Friday, my dad would collect the cans once the trash had been collected by the service company. And he would bring them back to the end of everyone's driveway. Do you ever come home and you're like, oh, man, i got to bring the cans back to the garage? That was my dad's ministry. Just something simple, right, to show a little love to his neighborhood, right? And folk, I believe it's in those kind of ways that we can make a difference for God's kingdom. We can feed the sheep of God's pasture. Sometimes it's just being a listening ear to someone, making sure that they know that you care about them. Just saying, maybe, how can I help you? How can I be a support? Please know that I'm here for you. Our church is here for you. We are the light on this hill, caring for all of God's children. I believe more and more in our community, people are realizing that this is the kind of church that we are. And I couldn't be more encouraged. I couldn't be more proud of this serving heart that our church has. Right? It's in the Three pillars of our mission and vision, right? That we are to be a serving church, amen? And so I encourage us this day to align our hearts with Jesus Christ. And I believe if we feed one sheep at a time, one person at a time, we will build God's kingdom for His glory. Amen? Amen. way that we can love and serve others and to feed the sheep of God's pasture is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, his servant attitude, his sacrifice on a cross so that we might be forgiven, so that we might have the gift of salvation, so that we might be able to spread God's love knowing that we are loved by God. And so today we come to this table because we have a heart for Jesus. We come to this table because we believe that the tomb was empty, amen? We come today because we believe, because we've been baptized. And please know that this table is open to all who have a heart for Jesus. All that have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the night of his arrest, he took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, shed for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God 
for the people of God. May the elders please come forward.
Please stand as we sing our final hymn, We Are, as we spread the light and love of Jesus Christ as we feed his sheep this day. What a great closing hymn, because we are the church on a hill, right? Shining the light of Jesus Christ, ever brighter, right? As an intergenerational church, as we aspire to be welcoming, growing, and especially today, serving. Through the church has left the building ministry. And so we go out being the light of the world. We go out feeding the sheep of God's pasture. But not just today, but for all days. To share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with our words, and certainly with our deeds. And now let us receive the benediction. Receive the blessings of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now go forth shining the light of Jesus Christ from this hill. Now go forth taking care of God's sheep, feeding his sheep, until we either meet again in this place or his kingdom come. Amen. And all of God's people say together, Amen. Amen.